My name's Clive Jones, and I'm uh, originally from Newport in South Wales. I'm uh, totally blind, and I'm a former Welsh Guardsman. I've also always been told that I'm a man who never really takes life that serious. And a, and a thing, or a part of that that comes out is the first day that I actually walked into St Dunstan's. Um, totally blind, didn't have a clue where I was, what I was doing, or what was going on. My sighted escort from the regiment walked me straight into a closed lift door. Who's the blind one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously I grew up uh, in South Wales in, in Newport, I mean, which is a, quite a, I suppose, back then was quite a, a nice experience, but a hard experience, having to sort of, it's dog eat dog really, in a little village where I was from. Due to a conversation with my, my mother, where she told my brother and sister they would be train drivers or nurses or something equally as exciting. She told me I was going to join the army. That, at 16, I did. So after several months of uh, hard and vigorous training in Purbright in Surrey, I joined the regiment Welsh Guards. I was then sent first to my first tour of Northern Ireland. And then since then, I've been to another tour of Northern Ireland. Uh, the regiment have been to Belize, Kenya, America, Canada, I mean, but my favourite part was my ceremonial duties in London. Not everybody is well enough and good enough to join the Welsh Guards, but to do Her Majesty's Troop in the Colour and ceremonies that have been going on for hundreds of years, such as the Ceremony of the Keys in the Tower of London, is fantastic. I mean, for myself personally, it wasn't nothing to do with me, but the regiment itself was actually the ones who carried Princess Diana when she was unfortunately killed. Um, sadly, when serving in Aldershot, uh, I was uh, assaulted by somebody who was uh, mentally ill, and after suffering uh, severe facial injuries, I was left totally blind. I woke up uh, six days later after my coma, and uh, I was met by what was then, and it still is today, my rock, that being my wife. And Stephanie said to me, she goes, how are you? And the first thing I said was, well, and I don't know why I said this, you didn't marry a blind man. If you want to go, go. And, you know, I mean, if she would said, okay, fine, I'm gone, it wouldn't have changed a thing. I loved her then, I love her now. And she said to me, I told you in sickness and in health. To me, that shows a special person. And she's maintained that. She's been absolutely fantastic ever since. So after waking up out of my coma and sort of settling into the fact that I am never going to see again, you know, I mean, what I see is total blackness. I was met by a person sat on my bed who, who I found out later to be uh, a guy called Ray Hazan, who was also a fellow St. Dunstaner and his wife. And, and he's presented me with a watch, a talking watch and a badge, and said to me, you are now a St. Dunstaner. It was simple as that. I was a one of the lucky ones. I was picked up in service in hospital. So I haven't really suffered years of blindness before I had the help. And I am grateful for them, for, you know, to St. Dunstan's for that. So when I started my rehabilitation in St. Dunstan's on the 8th of January 2001, I was uh, placed in the reception and met by this, well, man mounting. I mean, a guy called Martin Shale, six foot five, and let's say rather quite, quite badly built. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, made me look like a shrimp. Um, but he, you know, introduced himself and he, he took me round and he showed me my room and orientated me to my room and found me the bar, which was nice, and we've been blind drunk in there a few times. Um, he showed me the other important areas, like the gym, which I've never been in, um, and, the, and the canteen and all the rest of it. I mean, it wasn't until a couple of, couple of days, a couple of weeks later, I actually found out this guy who showed me round and looked after me 
was actually totally blamed himself. Now that, to me in some respects, shows you what, with the confidence and the self-esteem, a blind person can do. Since, since being blind, I mean, I've been, in, been introduced to lots of, you know, charity fundraising, which I always used to do anyway. But with St Dunstan's, they've took me on a new level and they introduced me to archery, which has been a big part of my life. Uh, I think it was a year last February, I was up at uh, the, the new establishment in uh, Llandino to shoot archery against Prince William, which we th I thrashed him. But, you know. That's my boy. But I, I was told by a good friend of mine uh, later on, of course you would have beat him, Clive. He had a blindfold on. Mm -hmm. Obviously I didn't. Um, but <laughs> but um, no, I mean, St Dunstan's have been such a sort of inspiration for me. I mean, as, as you've already been told, the ladies and the gentlemen you meet there fantastic they are unique in it they've all got their own little stories you know that they range from i think there's about six younger than me to many you know i mean we've just lost a few now that are over 100 years of age so i mean the the things that they show you with independent living skills i mean obviously being ex-guardsman i do have standards and i still like to wash and dry and iron in my clothes i mean the wife don't touch them except my trousers I'm wearing today, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, fair dues. I mean, so they have taught me a hell of a lot. Uh, they've taught me how to use a computer, which again, sounds pretty simple, but close your eyes and try and do it. It's not easy at all. So if I owe anything to St. Dunstan's, it's a lot. They've brought me out of my shell. They've given me the confidence to move on. Maybe as my wife will probably tell you, a little bit too much confidence. Because mm -hmm. at times I don't think. Because I'm that confident, I sometimes don't think I'm blind. Which is <laughs> pretty silly. But apart from that, I mean, you know, St Dunstan's, as has been mentioned, they work on donations and, and that's where all their funding comes from. And, you know, the, the fundraising and everything they do is important, you know, for people worse off than myself. That, you know, it is important, and and you know, I mean, obviously, if we can get as much as we can, then better. But no, I I'd like to thank you all for listening, you know, to my to my story. It it's unique in itself, in part it's quite gruesome, but that's not for today. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. Enjoy your day. Thank you.